So in the last video that Reese was in, we actually built him a computer because I accidentally destroyed his MacBook. But as a lot of you said, that wasn't necessarily a great replacement because I gave him a gaming desktop instead of a laptop. And then after a lot of discussion and a lot of him begging me, you know, you can you can take the gamer out of a Mac, but you can't take the Mac out of the gamer. So uh, we, we went ahead and we picked up Reese a brand new 2018 edition MacBook Air. So this is everything that he needs has the same dual core, eight gigs of RAM, six, 128 gigs of storage. So basically everything that yours was, as cheap as that we could possibly get it, and as light as we could possibly get it. That's what we got running on in today's video, is this 2018 MacBook Air. But when we picked it up, I got to wondering, can you play video games on this? Well, it has an Intel UHD 617, whatever the freaking crap that means, and basically, uh, that boils down to League of Legends and browser games. Like, not, not, not a whole heck of a lot that you're gonna be able to do on that. But, we've solved that issue many times over with new inventions like this, the Razer Core X. I will tell you, it took us a lot to get it here because they do not sell it locally in South Africa. I had to buy it off of Amazon and then a lot of shipping and all of that. So we have the perfect environment to put a gaming GPU on here. But before I go into the whole point of today's video, this is Future Brett speaking, let me tell you who today's video sponsor is, and that is Ting, my friends. In case you're still living on uh, outdated and outmoded concepts of how to pay your phone bill, Ting is the new way to do it. You pay for what you actually use. They have nationwide LTE coverage using two different networks. You bring your phone from your previous phone provider, or you can purchase one on their Ting shop, my friends. It's the best way to save money if you're looking to get a new phone provider. Me and my wife were on Ting prior to moving to South Africa and our average phone bill was about $24. And that's about the average for Ting where the average cell phone bill is only $23 a month because you pay for what you actually use. No extra fills, no extra nothing, just Ting and all you need from them. It's good life. Anyways, if you guys go to ufd.ting.com, link in the video description, you're gonna save $25 off your first bill, which would effectively make it free if you're in the average user section, or you can get $25 off a phone on the Ting shop if you're looking to pick up a new one. So check out ufd.ting.com and switch to the mobile carrier that makes sense. And they like you so much that they don't use robots when you call them. They actually wanna to speak to you and give you actually good customer service. So check out Ting, ufd.ting.com. And let's get back to past Brett telling you about everything that's going on in the video. Hey friends, just before we start this video, I wanna remind you that our annual 24 hour charity live stream is taking place tomorrow at 9 a.m. South African Standard Time, January 25th here on the UFD Tech Channel. So if you guys wouldn't mind showing up, supporting us by showing up in the chat, donating to help orphan and vulnerable children in Southern Africa. We've got some giveaways. We've got Wootwear matching all donations up to $3,000. It's gonna be an exciting time. Wanna see you there. Now, the initial plan was to just go Linus Tech Tip style and put the most ballin' GPU we have right in here, which, oh, there sounds like there's a screw loose. There it goes. So we have this Gaming X Trio RTX 2080 Ti from MSI. It fits perfectly. So this was the idea. We we're gonna shove this in here. I confirmed that it was able to fit before I even purchased it. And as far as I knew, with the two eight pins and the six pin, if you just run the two eight pins, everything will be fine. But this is not true. You can't run the two eight pins without the six pin. So we can't run it off of this power supply, even though it's a 600 odd watt power supply. Since it only has two eight pins, we're not gonna be able to do that. However, that doesn't mean that this video is dead. I actually purchased an adapter that's one eight pin to two eight pins. And with the setup on the power supply, it should be able to power it, no problem. You should have all of the, the voltages you need. Everything should work there. So we're gonna scrap the 2080 Ti for now. I'm gonna put this over here. We're gonna, we're gonna get to the best gaming experiences you can have on a MacBook Air at some time later. But let's go ahead and throw in the only other RTX card we have right now, which is our Founders Edition RTX 2060 that Nvidia sent over, and we're gonna work on it this way. So we're gonna, we're gonna see what ray tracing is like with the MacBook Air, because we, we'll get the best gaming experience with the RTX 2080 Ti. We'll do that eventually. But now, let's go and see what a bare level ray tracing experience is like and see what kind of video games we can play with this thing. I know a lot of people are saying right now, but Brett, Apple doesn't support Nvidia. That's completely correct. But thankfully, there's this magical thing called Bootcamp, which has recently made it super easy to actually 
Uh, just use it. Oh, I should probably screw that down before I shove it in like that. Makes it super easy. If you dual boot Windows with the MacBook Air, you can play all the video games that you want with NVIDIA cards. It's almost nearly plug and play, I hope. So we'll find out what that's like after we drop that in there. And then I, I just want to point out one thing, one thing that's this like IO shield for the card fits in so well with the Core X, like the, just the black IO shield. Well done, NVIDIA. Well done, Razer. So to make this project work, we don't have enough USB ports. So we have two Thunderbolt 3 ports here. One of these is gonna connect to the Razer Core X, but then we need to have peripherals because you can't game on a controller if you're trying to go for the best gaming experience. So we picked up this hyperdrive adapter. So that's gonna allow us to have two Thunderbolt ports, keyboard and mouse support. The Razer Core X will charge it off of the first Thunderbolt port. And then we're gonna use this Samsung portable SSD, this T5 to host all of the games that we need to play because this only has 128 gigs of storage. But then when you actually do the boot camp, it gives you 60 gigs of storage and you can't, you can't really do it. So we're gonna get everything set up. We're gonna make sure that this is ready to go. And we're gonna play video games right here at the GGWP desk. And we're gonna make sure that we have a great experience with the games on the MacBook Air. Why'd you talk me into doing this, Reese? Because you know you want to. I do want to, but I, I have a, very good feeling this is gonna suck. Okay, it's been a few days. I'm sure you can tell from the ad spot. Anyways, we had an issue with the Razer Core for whatever reason. It wasn't booting up when I was trying to use it, but then I switched out the Thunderbolt cables and then it worked. But then I put the Thunderbolt, original Thunderbolt cable back and then it was fine. Whatever, I don't care. The point is now it's working. All I have to do is plug in this little uh, adapter right here from Hyperdrive. We've already got the display set up. We have the external drive loaded with all of the games, mouse and keyboard plugged in. Gonna plug in the cable for the display on the RTX 2060, plug this puppy in, and then uh, let's turn on the laptop. All right, that's Gucci. So now we're in Windows and then we just, bam, turn that on. Give it a second to murder itself and the monitor should turn on. The whole point of this video is we're gonna do ray tracing on a MacBook Air. So let's go ahead and let's start with the ray tracing benchmark, which is the one from 3D Mark. We'll do 3D Mark, we'll do Battlefield, we'll do that Quake ray tracing, and then we'll do some actual video games to see how this freaking i5-3210Y performs, which is two cores, four threads, and has a boost of 3.6? I think its base frequency is 2.2. It just trying to open up 3D Mark. We're, we're pegged at nearly 100%, we were at least. Oh, look at that. Yes, look at that delicious delicious issues, benchmarks. Port Royal, let's load it up. Let's look at ray tracing on the MacBook Air. And run, I'm timing this. Oh wow, the processor's pegged so hard that the background even stopped working. Ah, ah, we're at 90 seconds and it still hasn't loaded yet. 100%, three gigahertz. A good two minutes and 30 seconds after I click start, but it still has to freaking load the benchmark even still. Ah, there it is. Oh, come look at this. Go, come look at that frame rate. A, a solid 13 to 14 FPS with the ray tracing. This is what ray tracing is supposed to look like, my friends. All slow and not usable. <laughs> yeah, the CPU is dying over here. Just pegged continuously at 100%. It's, uh, it's, it's not going anywhere. Everything just works. You did it, Jensen. Mac and Nvidia, happy together. Finally, it's not my fault that you guys screwed up and Apple doesn't want to work with you anymore. I shouldn't have to jump through hoops and install Windows to get this to work. Gosh dang it. There we go. A score of 3,188. When we ran this on a desktop with, I think the 9900K, we got closer to 4,500. So, and that's just the graphics score. That doesn't really take the CPU into account. Obviously the CPU is a gosh dang bottleneck, but that's, uh, we got ray tracing to work. That's, that's the whole point. Let's, uh, let's do Quake. Let's, let's give it a, a fully ray trace video game. Okay, so this is at 1440p. See the frame rate is currently a solid 23, 22. Yes, please. 30, okay, hello. Oh, I saw 24. Oh yeah. Super cinematic. That's, that's, that's the frame rate you need if you want to be in cinema. 60 is overrated. But I mean, we, we don't spend $350 on a graphics card to play at 1440p. No, my friends. We spend $350 to play at 720p. There we go. Oh yeah. There's the frame rate. 106 FPS, 720p. Looks groggy as all nonsense. 
That's what I'm all about. It's what everybody's all about. Look at the ray tracing. Look at the fully reflective, immersive environment. Oh, look at the water fully reflecting my arm. Yes. It actually reflects the gunshot too. Look at that. 100 FPS, 720p. We can get Quake to work. RTX 2060, it's there. Okay, let's do Battlefield. Mm-hmm, <laughs> that glorious. Oh, oh missed it. It was at 10 FPS. Shape CPU 100% at 2.4 gigahertz. Sheesh. The RAM is just getting gobbled up. We're at like a good solid three minutes right now. Part of it could be the fact that it's like loading off the SSD. Okay, so five minutes to get to this screen. Amazing. I love it. Now we just gotta keep waiting. 7.4 gigs of RAM. There we go, yes. A total of six minutes. Let's just make sure all of the settings are proper. I didn't even change anything. What do you mean apply video settings? Oh dang, oh dang. What? <sighs> you good, fam? There we go. Okay, let's do four, 1080p. Even though it's 1440p monitor, let's keep 1080p. We don't need to, we don't need to murder this thing. So we've got DX12 on, ray tracing is on, and we've got everything at ultra, which the 1060 should be able to do about 60 FPS. Should be. Should be. On a normal desktop system, we should be able to get 60 FPS in this instance. And the best thing to do in this instance, at least from what I've gathered on the 2060, if you lower the textures to high instead of ultra, and then you drop ray tracing a little bit, actually you can even keep ray tracing in ultra, you just drop the textures to high, you're gonna average between 70 and 80 over, like, and it doesn't make a huge visual quality yeah. difference. Yeah, you don't need the best of the best settings when it comes to the 2060, but you still get ray tracing that's, uh, impeccable and not noticeable whatsoever. If you guys haven't seen that video, check it out. I think that, you know, that corner. Check out the video where we tried to see uh, if we could tell if ray tracing was there with Battlefield 5. The MacBook Air is starting to pick up in volume. That's the MacBook Air's fan. That's honestly louder than the Razer Core right now. Yeah. Okay, so we got a solid 10 to 13 FPS after waiting for 17 minutes, probably more like seven minutes, and uh, it's dead. It died. We waited for hours and then uh, now it's not even working. All right, are, are you gonna help me? I would like to play this game. Nothing. I'm gonna have to call Battlefield just a solid no. I can't even open it again. We're back after another 15 minutes, but uh, it looks like it's working. I fixed it so that the textures are at high and not ultra, and then I set ray tracing to medium instead of having ray tracing on Ultra, which, yeah, it's working. Look at those reflections in the water. It's gorgeous. But, uh, yeah, less than 30 FPS. It's 30 FPS when staring at a wall. When I actively do anything, we're at uh, 25 to 30. Let's see, okay, let's, let's get this to 60. I can't handle this. Let's drop texture quality a bit more. Let's drop ray tracing to low. It hates its life. This isn't working. It's not even loading. Okay, let me unplug the monitor and plug it back in. There we go. Except for this is now broken. This is not a smooth experience whatsoever. Why is that happening? Like, those, those things, these things are on this monitor. Okay. Let's see if those profile changes saved. Set everything to medium. I guess that works. Let's, let's just do everything on medium. And finally, and still bad. Still 30 FPS. I don't think the GPU settings needed to be tweaked down. And when I say 30, I mean 25 to 30. Oh, this is awful. The GPU is running at like 50 to 60%. It's not like it's not working at all. But uh, yeah, there's a bottleneck for sure. I'm gonna give it one more try. I'm gonna change some settings on the fly. I guarantee it's gonna crash, but I have to, I have to try. Everything turned to low. 1080p, everything on low. Look at that, 30, 35. 37, yes! No, don't shoot me, I'm running, I'm running. No, you don't shoot the dude who's playing the game. I'll be all right, 17 FPS, 20, uh, 19. It's also the RAM, like only having eight gigs of RAM is really hurting it. You can see it's maxing out at 7.5. Yeah. It definitely needs more than this. Okay, so we're averaging a hard 20 right now. A uh, good 14. All right, you know how we get better FPS here? We up the resolution. Mm to decrease the load on the CPU. That's not how it works at all. Give me 1440p. Oh no, that made it worse. Oh my. Eight, nine, sub 10 FPS. Oh, 
Great Gatsby, this is garbage. Oh wow, 1440p murked this so hard. It didn't even change it, it's still at 1080p. It just derped itself. It's still at 1080p, I didn't even change it. And everything's on low, oh gosh. All right, well, I've had enough of this. You know what we need to do? We need to get this on a cooler because I tell you, that CPU is throttling. We have to figure out a way to cool down the MacBook Air, especially when we're bringing the 2080i. Like, I don't, I don't even wanna play another game. That was so bad, that was, that was awful. Okay, well. That's what ray tracing looks like on the MacBook Air. Clearly the 2060 is just too manly for the, the MacBook Air. Can't, can't really handle it. So we'll, we'll get back to you. Once we get that power cable that we need for the 2080 Ti, we'll plug it in, we'll get a MacBook Air going with the 2080 Ti, and we will find a way to make games not suck as much as they did today. <sighs> Anyways, let me know if you guys like these types of videos, combining things that just really shouldn't go together. I'm keen to hear if you, uh, if you appreciate these. Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget that this video was brought to you by Ting. If you want to save $25 off your first Ting bill or get $25 in Ting store credit, check out ufd.ting.com and start saving money on your mobile phone bill. And before we go, don't forget, we have the 24-hour live stream tomorrow. Show up, please, please, for the children. Thanks. Anyways, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. I'm done with Mac and the MacBook Air, and it ticks me off. This is dumb. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too.